Hoje em dia somos os UVX and this is What if a supernova hits Earth? Well, it's not Khazgazar in a nutshell. As you all know, whenever Khazgazar upload a video, I cannot wait to react it. I love science. Of all the fields, science, anything, you know, astro science basically, is the favorite thing of mine. And whenever a topic like what if a supernova hit Earth by Khazgazar, I'm like, yeah, this is the best fucking thing ever. So this is going to be awesome. First of all, what if a supernova hits Earth? I know that uh, there is no supernova that is going to happen for at least thousands of years that is that close enough that could hurt us basically, you know, I guess 30, 50, you know, light years or something. The closest one that could be big enough is Eta Carina, I think. That probably might have happened already, but the light, you know, hasn't reached us or something. But when it happens, right, in the southern hemisphere, Australia, New Zealand, whatever, if you go there at every night for, I guess, weeks or something, you'll be able to see something bright in the sky, right? Apart from the moon, that would be the brightest thing that is, right? It would be like, holy shit, that's bright. It won't look like a star because that's the ongoing supernova, right? So, you know, that day would be just fucking awesome. And especially in today's days of TikToks and just social media where everybody has camera. Imagine that, right? People just flock. The Australia's tourism would go off the roof because of it. So, because I would definitely be going there. So, yeah, that, that is just epic. But yeah, there is no supernova that could hurt us. Our sun cannot go supernova. It's not big enough, right? It will fuck up the earth when it goes kaboom. Not kaboom. It will expand, right, in a few billion years. It will start expanding, I guess, in a one and a half or two billion years, right? But it will reach the peak expanding, I guess, in three and three and a half a billion or something. So we have time. So this is going to be awesome. Let's watch it. All right, let's watch it. Supernovae are the most powerful explosions in the universe, unleashing mm. enough energy to outshine galaxies. We have no real metaphor for their power. If the sun were to magically go supernova, it would feel like you were being hit by the energy of a nuclear explosion every second for weeks. That's basically what While it is. supernovae are the engines of creation, forging the elements that enable life, they also burn sterile whole regions okay, of... No, okay, that's not what it is, right? Uh, nuclear explosion is an unstable, basically, reaction, while sun is a stable reaction. That's why it doesn't explode. And when it explodes, it's actually because of you know, collapsing into the core and then with a massive pressure just basically expanding. So it's not the same as an, expl you know, uh, bomb that we have, nuclear bomb, but it's still using nuke, right? It's a, sun is a nuke in a way, right? It goes under nuclear fusion, so yeah, kind of, because energy would be the same. But if we hit by that wave, first of all, we didn't see it coming because it would come at that massive speed, right? So as soon as we, as soon as it hits us, then we realize, and I think by that we are fucked. Earth won't be destroyed instantly, but we will be, right? Earth will take some time because you, Earth is not some small body that's just going to be destroyed by waves. But, you know, waves after waves, Earth will start to get destroyed as well. We are screwed. Galaxies. So what would happen if one hit Earth? There you go. <laughs> There are, roughly speaking, two ways to make a supernova. Either the core of a massive star implodes, or, less common, a white dwarf gains mass to the point where it ignites explosive nuclear fusion. Yeah. The outcome is the same, a supernova explosion. When we think of an explosion on Earth, we think of something that happens fast and ends. But a supernova is more like a volcanic eruption followed by a tsunami. At first, there's a colorful ball of hot, expanding gas, creating a spectacular cloud that will shine for about a month. But then, it doesn't stop. Hot and dangerous gas rushes outwards at speeds of 10,000 kilometers a second through the near vacuum of space, sweeping up the sparse gas of the galaxy. This wall of gas expands for tens of thousands of years and will eventually span up to dozens of light years. And I mean, it's a big star. It has a lots of things to set off, lots of energy to set off, right? In, in our time, when we think of bomb, it's a very small thing. So it explodes and that's it, immediate. Well, this to that scale will take a long time to, I guess, you know, explode. Until it finally cools off and disperses its substance back into the galaxy. Mm. So what if this star tsunami hits us? Well, the damage depends on how far away it is. Yeah. 
Stage one, thousands of light years away. Yeah. Humans have witnessed dozens of supernovae, but all of them were thousands of light years away. They appeared as new stars, some outshining the moon, twinkling for a few weeks and disappearing. Aside from looking very pretty at this distance, they don't do much to us. Stage two, 300 light years away. Things begin to get a bit icky once a supernova occurs around 300 light years away. We can expect one this close to us every few million years. A single star giving the night sky an eerie glow like twilight. Mm. And while this is far enough away and dim enough to not do harm to us, they can affect the Earth. At these distances, it's like being hit by the last weak waves of the star tsunami. Not strong enough to do real damage, but still noticeable. Mm. In fact, we know that over the past 10 million years, multiple supernovae have struck Earth from these distances because we can find radioactive isotopes of iron deep in the rocks and sediments at the bottom of the ocean. Amazingly, these supernovae around the solar system have cleared a 1,000 light year wide pocket of space that's called the local bubble. They blew away the interstellar gas and dust, creating a lumpy wall of gas that's now a cradle for star formation. Stage 3, 150 light years away. Once a supernova happens much closer than 300 light years, we're approaching the zone where it does real damage. Yeah. Stars have extremely really powerful awesome, sure. magnetic fields. When they die, the tsunami of dead star actually retains a lot of this magnetic energy woven through the shock wave that expands outwards. In this highly magnetized cloud, we get conditions like in a huge particle accelerator that's accelerating charged particles like protons, nuclei and electrons to immense speeds which means we have an expanding cloud that is shooting deadly radiation in all directions long after the bright light from the initial explosion has faded away. If a supernova happens too close by, waves of these cosmic rays will wash over the solar system for thousands of years. Mm. See, the thing with that is the first wave will destroy our protective zone, right? That's the first wave, fine. I think our protective zone can definitely deflect the first wave but it's multiple ways so after the, that second wave third wave yeah that will fuck up us badly right radiation will hit constantly to the planet at the point will be screwed while we're mostly protected on earth's surface by the atmosphere and ozone layer the influx of extra radiation will still increase cancer and mutation rates mm. not enough to cause a mass extinction but it will be noticeable Spaceflight would become impossible in the solar system as astronauts wouldn't survive the waves of radiation for long. Damn. We don't know exactly how bad this would be, but a supernova that is close enough may trap our species on Earth for generations, maybe mm. thousands of years. I don't pause too much, but uh, if a supernova happened that closely, 150 light years, I think we would know. We have tools to kind of know that it's going to happen. So I don't think the astronauts would be there to begin with. We'll, you know, pull them back, but still. It only gets worse from here. Stage four, closer than 100 light years. Within 100 light years, things get bad as a supernova disrupts our climate in ways that we don't fully understand yet. There are a few unpleasant things happening all one after another. First, the high energy photons arrive from the explosion, followed by many decades of radiation from the radioactive tsunami, both of which seriously damage the ozone layer, Earth's shield against harmful radiation. Mm. The ozone layer absorbs ultraviolet radiation by breaking apart ozone, O3, into O2 and a free oxygen atom, which later reforms back into another ozone molecule. But the supernova radiation breaks up nitrogen molecules that gobble up the free oxygen, breaking the cycle and depleting the ozone layer quickly. Without a radiation shield, everybody living on the surface is exposed to very high levels of UV radiation from our sun. Cancer rates would skyrocket and just going outside during the day could be life-threatening. The extra radiation would also kill a lot if not most of the plankton in the oceans that live near the surface and are the basis for the marine food chains, leading to a mass extinction. Mm. Worse still, supernova radiation would ionize gas in the atmosphere, which means that it would punch through molecules and knock electrons off nuclei, leaving them charged. These charged nuclei then act as seeds for water vapor to gather and form massive global clouds. In the worst case, they would reflect enough sunlight to trigger an ice age. In fact, it's thought that the Ice Age two and a half million years ago was caused by a supernova. 
Ah. Some scientists even think that a supernova about 60 light years away might have been the cause of the Devonian mass extinction 350 million years ago. Texas But wait, the there's more. The electrons punched free by the radiation form enormous electric avalanches, or in other words, lightning. Earth is hit by some of the worst thunderstorms in millions of years. The intense lightning causes global wildfires that consume forests and crops, devastate cities, disrupt our electric... Yeah, I, I've, said the, I've said this in many times in the past that our environment and everything that makes this livable is very fragile, right? Any event of the history, whether it's super volcanoes, supernovas, sim, you know, radiations, even if it's far away radiation, does a you know chain effect of a weird kind that it always does something that screws everything up right it's just like we have a perfect balance right now as a perfect as it can be and any change in any direction is just fucked up it just change you know screws up the whole environment whole cycle and everything this is why people are you know get so afraid of the global warming people are denying oh it's gonna be fine but all the people who are saying that global warming is fine we are we are you know uh, screaming about it too much don't understand this concept like how how fragile our environment is and you know if, if it changes in any direction there's going to be a problem because we are already feeling because of global warming slightly changing and look at every you know storms in every every place on the planet right the weathers are getting extreme storms are getting somewhat extreme and this is a bit of change Right? If something like this happens, like he said, like, you know, massive thunderstorms and God knows, everything will be screwed. Electrical grids and global supply chains. All while a decimated ozone layer leaks deadly radiation. Yeah. While in the past the ecosystem may have bounced back from a nearby supernova after a few thousand or million years, there's no guarantee modern civilization can take a hit of this magnitude. We would face food shortages, skyrocketing prices Only and wars are, we as nations can. struggle to not be consumed by chaos. So a supernova this close would at the very least do significant damage for hundreds or thousands of years, if yeah. not end our modern civilization and with it millions or even billions of lives. It won't extinct our species, but the modern version of us will not exist. Even that is fragile. It's not just the environment, even we are fragile with the in modern version of us, right? Many things can disturb us. Uh, lots of things like, you know, satellites and how our, uh, you know, we are dependent on many things like internet and GPS and everything, right, for defense and God knows what. All of that could be disrupted for, because of one solar flare. That kind of solar flare happened just a few years ago, but kind, kind of missed us. If it didn't and if it hit us, right, lots of defense mechanism would have gone down, lots of grids would have gone down. We are extremely fragile as a modern civilization. And people are not sitting down and actually figuring out, like, this is a big problem. We need to come up with a system that doesn't rely or, you know, doesn't get destroyed because of simple global phenomena. But we can't do that because we can't even manage small shit that is happening on the world. We are really fragile, basically. Still, humanity would likely survive and could recover. Yeah, humans Stage will survive. Stage 5, closer than 25 no, light years. No, I don't think we'll survive that. A supernova that. closer 25 than 25 is light close. years means that fucked. we're in its kill radius, where yeah. a mass extinction is all but guaranteed. Yeah, we have Probably fucked. about half of the ozone layer would be destroyed, and massive climactic disruption on a scale we've never witnessed would ravage Earth. Entire ecosystems would swiftly be wiped out by radiation as global wildfires envelop the planet. Way too quickly. All the things described before happen, but way more intensely and much faster. Mm. A few people might survive for years in bunkers if they have food supplies, but the world... Oh, come on, he's going to use some Fallout references here. <laughs> what you I'm pretty sure he has given Fallout references in one of his older videos. Because Kuz does play Fallout, he's a Fallout fan. I'm pretty sure I've said it like, oh, look at that, he, even he's Fallout fan. He should have put something like a b Blanco, whatever, that is, some kind of a thing, right? Hell, I even forgot the name of it, but yeah, some kind of a product from Fallout. They return to will be devastated and hostile to life for hundreds of thousands of years. Human extinction is extremely likely. The final stage, four light years. Being any closer to a supernova is very unlikely because space is big, yeah. but the effects would be extreme. Even from four light years away, the stuff. distance to Alpha Centauri, a supernova would be almost as bright as the sun in the sky. 
While mm. casting two shadows could be fun for a few hours, within days the Earth's surface gets as hot as a sauna, baking the surface for weeks until the explosion fades. The surface of Earth burns, scoured of life. Even the oceans aren't safe. The massive amount of radiation that follows burns away the ozone layer, killing everything that sees sunlight. It would be the largest extinction event in history, reducing life to a few survivors in the deep sea and critters in the deep soil. Life basically has to start over. Conclusion: How worried do you need to be? None. Okay. Look, I'm thinking in a thousands of years, if humans survive and if we don't kill ourselves and if the universe doesn't kill kill us, basically, even though there are many things that could happen in that time. I, I'm see. I'm visualizing our civilization to. Be, you know, in recent time, it feels like science is stagnating somewhat. It's not going at a pace that we would think, but we need to understand. We are seeing that from our, you know, life, you know, lifespan point of view, right? So, in reality, modern science is not that old to begin with. Hundred, two hundred years. That's nothing, and we are at this stage. In thousands of years, we could be strong enough that even if a supernova supernova happens at four light years away. Uh, we could shield the whole solar system if we really want to. We can manipulate us in a solar system, right? I mean, Kuskusat has, uh, you know, showed so many videos of how we can, you know, manipulate solar system to begin with, right? How there could be thrusters, like we could even manipulate where sun goes or whatever. I know this feels like a very far, like, what if, but I feel like we can do that, right? Physically, you know, theoretically, on a paper, it's not impossible. So I feel like in thousands of years, if we can do that, if we can protect ourselves from that kind of supernova, then I guess humanity will be untouchable, because that's some next level shit if we can do that. But before that, we need to do many things like control our own shit in here on planet, like har you know, harvesting you know hurricanes. Hurricanes destroy everything, but we can harvest power from that. We can power things using hurricanes' energy. So there's many things we would need to do before that, harnessing power from the fucking super volcanoes if it go explodes. So should you worry? No. Fortunately, there are only a handful of stars that may explode within 1,000 light years of Earth, and none are close enough to be yeah. a serious threat. Even better, these stars will probably not go supernova for many millions of years. So you are safe. But there's no guarantee. Yeah, I think uh, there is a chance Eta Carina could have already exploded. We can't know that. So, you know, and it should go supernova in any time. But then again, at a cosmic scale, any time could be from anywhere from decades to millennia. But if it happens in our lifetime, it would be an awesome show, like I said in the start of the video. T for the far future. As stars orbit the galaxy, our descendants may find themselves dangerously close to a supernova. But by then, a far more advanced and wiser that humanity this, this will is what I was talking about. be yes. able to just move Forgot out of the, the way. Forgot the name of that. What was that? Stellar Engines? Any... Stellar Engines, right? That was the name. Case, you can sleep well tonight under the beautiful night sky. I know, there are other threats. <laughs> and if you dream about understanding the physics behind this video and others, we've created a series of lessons to build your understanding yeah. of fundamental science. There you go. Yeah, we'll go to brilliant.org forces nutshell. If there is one thing you should check out on brilliant, it's definitely this channel's content. But yeah, <laughs> he says you can sleep easily without worrying. Yeah, but there are other threats. Let's be honest. <laughs> Superniva, supernova might not be on our list of threats right now, but there are much many other threats. All right, bro. Well, that was what if a supernova hits Earth. Uh, we all know. It's the title, right? Even if you don't know much about this, as soon as you're a supernova hit Earth, we are all screwed, basically. If it hits Earth, right? If the radiation hit Earth, we are screwed somewhat. Like I said, our civilization is very fragile that way. Many, I mean, many things would be screwed, right? We are living in a world if a major city goes with a, goes through a blackout, simple blackout. Lots of crime increases and lots of damages happen just because of blackout. So if supernova radiation hits Earth, we are screwed. Anything closer to that, we are even more screwed, basically. Right, well, if you like my channel, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.